こんにちは This week we have another collector's edition. This is the part of the show where I'm trying to collect every single POW Sega Mega Drive game. And I've finally managed to pick up some Brazil games from Tech Toy. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. This month I've not managed to break the below 100 games remaining for the collection mark, but I have managed to pick up some unique items as well as some kind of, not shell filler, but standard games. And there's also a peripheral that makes its way into the collection. Let's check out what I've managed to pick up for this month's collector's edition. Now this month wasn't a huge month in terms of number of games we got into the collection compared to last month. I think last month there was something like 20, maybe 30 games added to the collection. This month there are only eight, but like I said, we've got the Brazil tech toy games being added to the collection. But let's start off with our first game. It is Super Lami. This game is a platformer game. Uh, you've played it a bit. Uh, maybe put an hour, maybe two hours into it. There's some interesting mechanics in it. You've, it's a platformer game essentially, and uh, you can use your tail to navigate across different parts of the world. There's some really interesting mechanics in there, and some of the presentation's really nice. I'd say it's a, like a solid six or seven out of 10 platform game. Uh, it's nothing that's gonna blow your socks off, but it's a, a decent addition to the collection. Next up, Dynamite Duke. I've wanted this game for a long, long time. I had it when it originally came out. Absolutely loved it when it came out, uh, but I sold it or swapped it or did something with it. I can't remember. Really, really fun game, or at least I find it uh, a lot of fun. It's a shooter game, so you shoot from the perspective of Dynamite Duke. You're basically looking over his shoulder and shooting, so pretty much kind of like your classic gun games, but without the gun game support in it. Um, and again, I think, I think it was Commando I watched back when I was a kid. I watched some really bad stuff when I was a, a kid. My parents let me watch some horrific films. I think they thought I was sleeping, but I was actually watching it. But kind of reminded me a bit of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, Commando. Um, but I really enjoyed playing this and had a lot of fun this month uh, getting back into Dynamite Duke. Barkley Shut Up and Jam. It is a two on two basketball game. Again, presentation in this game is absolutely lovely. I love the visuals in it. Some of the audio is really nice in it, but the gameplay is kind of run of the mill. Um, I didn't, I didn't get along with it. I didn't play too long. Maybe again, a couple of game sessions with it, um, but just, just your standard basketball game with some really nice visuals and nice settings. Right, street basketball is really cool. Another accolade sport game. This time, Hardball '94. This one is really, really run of the mill. I've got Hardball, the Cardboard Box Edition, um, and that was that was a bit of fun. And this isn't too far off from that. It's not a huge evolution from, from Hardball, but uh, it, it's an okay baseball game to have in the collection. Right, before we go on to the Brazil games, we have a peripheral, make it into the collection, and it is the six button joypad. And this one is in great condition. Uh, the box is in great condition to start off with. Really, really, really nice. And it comes with everything. So we have the uh, huge, huge instruction poster. <laughs> and it folds out. It's a massive instruction poster that you get with it. And then we obviously have the bag. Um, I don't know if it came with a blue tie or whether the seller added the blue tie. I know that some Mega Drive stuff had different colored ties. I've never had a six button controller before, so maybe it did come with the blue tie. Let me know in the comments below if this actually came with a blue tie or not. Uh, and then this is the six button controller. And of course, the uh, unique feature around it, it's got six buttons. Um, but there's also a mode button. I don't know if it will show up on here, but you've got a little mode button at the top here. And the reason for that is that some games are not compatible with the six button controller and you have to hold down the mode button 
um, and then it will make it a three button controller. Now some three button controller games you don't have to do this at all but there are some games that aren't compatible with this controller and so you had to hold down the mode button and then that would make the controller compatible again. Now when it comes to buying Tech Toy or Brazil games, I'm an absolute noob. I know nothing about them except just the stuff that's on the internet. I've never purchased one so I had no idea what the price of these games were. So I've spent the last four or five months looking at different sellers selling these games and trying to compare prices whilst trying to find some kind of historical information on them. Again, these games don't often exchange hands so it's really hard to get a fix on what they're worth. What I would say though is that I've found that the games that come from Brazil are usually double to three times the price of the sellers in Europe. And so I managed to buy my games from Stuart. Thank you, Stuart, for selling me some of your collection. I've got four games that we're going to take a look at now. And these were on average about a third less of what I could have picked them up for in Brazil. So again, just want to say thank you to Stuart M for uh, helping me out with uh, building out the first of my Brazil games, Tech Toy Games. For this full PAL collection. So first up we've got the top five, Sega top five, we've got Shadow Dancer in there, Sega Soccer, Super Monaco GP and Super Thunder Blade plus Flicky, mustn't forget Flicky. It's actually a pretty decent top five uh, compilation to put together there. I haven't got Shadow Dancer so I've actually spent a large amount of this month playing through Shadow, uh, Shadow Dancer on a tech toy cartridge on my PAL Sega Mega Drive, which was a lot of fun. But a pretty decent top five compilation there. Next up, we've got sports games. This is three games in here, three games in one. Super Volleyball, we never got that here in Europe or Australia. I think it only came out on the Genesis and in Brazil on the PAL, for a PAL territory console. Uh, World Championship Soccer 2, and then Super Real Basketball, which we all know isn't really super real and isn't that great. Uh, all these games come with instructions, of course, you know me, I won't buy it unless it's got the manuals and that's really the only collection, my Sega Mega Drive collection is the only one that I go for complete in box. The others I'm not too fussed about. If it comes complete in box, brilliant. If it doesn't, I'm not, not too worried about it. But for this full Sega Mega Drive collection, I am going for it complete in box, which makes it super pricey. I won't even attempt to say the name of this, but essentially it's a game show, quiz show, that I believe is on TV in Brazil. There's two versions of this. Um, there's the uh, one, number one we got here, and then whatever the name of the game show is, number two is uh, what you can buy. Um, this was the cheapest of the games. I played it for all of 15 minutes. I had my mobile phone actually in front of the TV screen doing translations for me, but this presentation's okay. There's some really nice audio actually in there. I'd say the audio design, because they've got the the presenter speaking, which is uh, which is pretty cool. And then the last of the Tech Toy games that I've got, uh, that I purchased, is Super 10. And there are some great, great games on here. This is a really good compilation, um, compilation cartridge. So we've got Columns, Revenge of Shinobi, Golden Axe, Sega Soccer, California Games, Super Monaco GP, Streets of Rage, Hang On, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Flicky. Absolutely brilliant top 10. I wish we'd got something like this over here in the UK. It's a great, great compilation. Now, those are my current games that I've got for Brazil. So there's four, and I think there's 10 exclusives, I think. Now, a lot of people say that once you've got the full 10 exclusives, that's it. It's a full power collection or goes towards a full power collection. Now, for me, I, I kind of think slightly differently. I feel that any Genesis game that also got a power release in Brazil would contribute to that. So if there's a game like Gargoyles, didn't come out in Europe, didn't come out in Australia, but it did come out uh, in Brazil, then that would be a PAL game that you'd need to collect to add to the collection, which obviously makes collecting for PAL Brazil games a lot bigger than just 10 games. And that's something I haven't worked out yet. So whilst I'm working towards getting below 100, I may actually find that I'm about 30, 40 short if there's a ton of games that came out in Brazil that didn't make it over to Europe or Australia. Uh, and I'll probably, knowing me, end up buying those as well. And then I can f say to myself at least, because this is for myself, it's not for YouTube. You know, I buy to play, I buy to have the nostalgia, I buy to have the excitement of having these physical games here. So for me, having that full collection and being able to say to myself, I actually have a full PAL collection. Um, for me to do that, I'd need to have all those extra Brazil games. 
Uh, I have no idea how much that's going to cost me. month's collector's edition. I'll be back next month with a full rundown of everything I've managed to add to the collection. And I've got my fingers crossed that next month will be a big one because I'm selling a huge amount of my extremely rare pieces in my collection. And that's because essentially my really, really rare pieces in the games collection, not the Mega Drive collection, but things in the PlayStation collection, things from my games development career, those things I don't really use they stay hidden away in boxes and so I decided well if I want to really fund this, if I really want to get through to the end of having a full collection of Sega Mega Drive games, fulfilling that childhood dream that I had, then I'm going to have to part with some of these items that to be honest I don't really look at and just stay hidden away. So I've chucked those up on eBay and to private sellers that are interested in them so they can go to homes where people will really appreciate them and I can build up some funds to hopefully help me finish this collection. Now, if you like what you've seen and you're new to the channel, why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below the video. We make brand new Retro Gamer Boy shows every single Monday and so that you never miss them, you can also click on a little bell just below this video. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy. Two of which you can watch over here.